Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Logan Larson, Mike Akins, and Norm Fazekas. Coming up on DTNS, how bad is Ring's law enforcement policy? Turn any old laptop into a Chromebook. And will you use the new Hyundai EV as a home office? This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, July 14th, 2022. J-Hope release day in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger J. My friends, my friends, we have so much to get to. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. The South Korean messaging super app Kakao will remove an external payment option in its Android app after Google blocked the company from updating the app in the Play Store. A recently passed law requires app stores to allow third-party payment systems, but doesn't mandate allowing links to redirect customers to another website. Well, they back down, but I don't think that's the last we're going to hear about that. Uh, Windows Central sources say Microsoft's current internal plans indicate it will change from a once-a-year feature update cadence to updating features in what it may call moments uh, that can happen up to four times a year. Major Windows releases would come once every three years if this plan turns out to be true. Microsoft announced back in November that it would move to annual feature updates with longer support terms. So ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley notes that Chief Product Officer Panos Panay made it clear at that time that new features could still come at other times besides the yearly update. So Foley suspects that these quote-unquote moments may be more of a marketing move than a substantive change to support. A New York jury convicted former CIA engineer Joshua Schulte on nine charges related to gathering, stealing, and transmitting classified information and obstruction of justice as part of leaking information to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks released data from Schulte as the Vault 7 leak back in 2017 detailing methods used by the CIA to access targets' computers and phones and smart TVs. People's Bank of China told the press Wednesday that China's digital yuan was used in transactions worth 83 billion yuan. That's about 12.3 billion U.S. 264 billion transactions have been conducted by May 31st. More than four and a half million businesses accept the digital yuan, and it's still in the testing phase. Uh, the central bank digital currency, or CBDC, is going to expand its pilot tests beyond the 23 cities and 15 regions it's in now. So digital yuan definitely the fastest growing, widely used <laughs> uh, CBDC so far. Puck News reports that Apple CEO Tim Cook, Apple Head of Services Eddie Q, and NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell met during the Sun Valley Conference last weekend. Apple is among those said to be trying to get the contract to carry the NFL Sunday ticket package. Disney, Amazon, and its current carrier, DirecTV, are also supposedly still interested, but Puck believes that Apple will be the most likely winner. Oh, you're going to get a bunch of people buying Apple TVs if that ends up being true. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's talk a little more about what's going on with Ring Doorbell. You might have seen uh, some pretty screamy-looking headlines out there. Responding to a request from the U.S. Congress, Amazon executive Brian Hoosman, and remember, Amazon owns Ring, told lawmakers that as of July 1st, Amazon provided Ring Doorbell footage from customer doorbells to U.S. law enforcement on 11 occasions, 11 times this year, without user consent or a court order. Usually, uh, usually a user consents and says, yeah, go ahead and give it. Uh, sometimes there'll be a subpoena. That means whether the user wants to or not, they have to give it over. But 11 times, Ring handed it over without either of those. Ring's law enforcement guidelines say that it reserves the right to, quote, immediately respond to emergency disclosure requests from police in cases of imminent danger. Huseman said that Amazon, quote, made a good faith determination that there was an imminent danger of death or serious physical injury to a person requiring disclosure of information without delay. Many companies have policies for emergency disclosure requests. So this isn't just Ring. Google has one. Twitter has one. Look around. They all say, hey, in an extreme circumstance, we might decide to just voluntarily hand over data, but It'll be good faith that there is imminent danger when we do. Uh, to put this in context, keep in mind, Ring reported it received 3,147 legal demands in 2021. That was up 65% over 2020. One could 
reasonably assume that there are even more legal demands this year. So 11 is a very small percentage of the number of requests that it got that it decided to just go ahead and comply with without user consent or a legal order. I saw a lot of chatter about this this morning um, from everyone, you know, on one side being like, if you own a ring device, throw it out now. It's a horrible company, you know, to people saying, well, but what were the 11 instances where this data was shared with law enforcement? You know, if you knew a little bit more about that, you might not be so up in arms about the fact that this happened without uh, the uh, the customer's consent or knowledge. I think that that plays into this a lot. Um, there are, you know, <laughs> no, I don't want my, you know, anything video related of my home being shared with anybody ever without me knowing about it. But if there was a mad person on the loose in my neighborhood and somehow I, you know, things were moving quickly and something that, that had been recorded by my device was going to help the good guys get the bad guys I don't know how upset I would be. I think it, it, it the context is really important here. I was literally about to say that sentence. I was going to say co- context is key here to to understand what's going on. I was thinking here in L.A., we have those infamous car chases and helicopters uh, searching grounds at, at night sometimes. And and you know, we have instances in my area where they're looking for someone, you know, whether it's good or bad. Neighborhood. Like people drive all around and they, they they're looking for someone. So in that kind of context, who knows that person sh- shot at someone or to kidnap a child if, if they're trying to if it's an emergency thing tom and i think it's what you you said in your reading that it's it's an actual imminent danger type of emergency i i i think that context is reasonable i think most reasonable people would side with that it's when there's lack of context that i can understand the crowd but at the same time it's it, emergencies are emergencies and yeah. i i'm i'm from one in I'm, I'm fine with that. You you can still say, I don't trust Ring, and I don't think they should ever be doing that. I think that's a reasonable position to take. But uh, but I, mm. I think it's important to understand that uh, you are talking about 11 cases. If the, And if these were abusive cases, first of all, there's only 11 out of more than 3,000. Uh, and you would likely have heard someone complaining about it before now in the current world in which we live in. They are not telling you the details of this because they are protecting the privacy of the individuals involved. Uh, You can't have it both ways. You can't say, like, protect everyone's privacy, but also tell me all the details of every every Mm -hmm. situation. It it, it just can't work both ways. Uh, I, I look at this and I think, okay, this is a rare instance, but there could be an instance where the police arrive uh, and find someone unconscious who's been stabbed. The ring doorbell is there on the front door. And they know that there's a good chance that whoever did this might have been caught fleeing on the ring doorbell. They can't get a a warrant fast enough to catch that guy because it's going to take a while to get the judge. And the person who could give them consent is lying unconscious being treated by the EMTs. Should they not, should ring not give them the, the information in that situation? Personally, I think that it's reasonable for Ring to say, yes, this is a situation that counts. I think what causes the problem here is that Ring has abused people's trust in the past. And so Mm -hmm. where you might say, oh, yeah, no, that's a reasonable situation. People are saying, "Okay, sure. But how many times have they done the wrong thing? How many times have they made the wrong call? The fact that it's 11 makes me think that probably not that often, but it's Ring. So you don't know. Mm -hmm. Google announced that Chrome OS Flex has moved to general availability. Uh, we talked about this back in February when they announced it, and you could get it before now, but now it's it's out of beta. It's it's available for everybody. More than 400 devices from Apple, Dell, Lenovo, HP, and more are certified to run Chrome OS Flex, uh, which can turn your old laptop into a Chromebook. Uh, you can down Chrome OS Flex to a USB drive for free. The certification list is just the models that have been thoroughly tested. You can install it on uncertified devices. There's there's no breaking of the terms of service. It just means they haven't found out whether it's going to work well on that device. So if it's certified, it meets minimum requirements. Uh, But all the features may or may not work. Google says it will continue to add certifications as it goes. But Lamar, tell us about some of the details here. Yeah, so some of the certification includes uh, basics like keyboard USB, Wi-Fi, et cetera, but doesn't guarantee Bluetooth, which I thought was interesting, uh, touchscreen, automatic uh, screen rotation, 
keyboard sh shortcuts, and SD card slots. These should work, but they might not. So they're just kind of letting you know that. Other features that are not supported on Chrome OS Flex at all, including fingerprint readers, optical drivers, our IR red webcams, proprietary connectors, stylus input, and Thunderbolt functionality. So at least you know. You yeah, know, if, yeah. you, if you got a, uh, a Mac, I mean, something, that, yeah, like you think about a Mac that has Thunderbolt, uh, and yeah. then you might not be able to use the Thunderbolt, but you can use a USB C. So yeah. that's, that's, at least they're putting out there that that's not a, uh, possibly available. What were you going to say, Sarah? I'm sorry. No, no, I was I was saying that Thunderbolt uh, stood out to me as well because I've got a few. <laughs> well, I don't want to tell you how many old MacBooks I have uh, behind <laughs> me somewhere in the studio, but uh, they're they're basically recycle bin fodder, and I just haven't had Apple come and pick them up yet uh, because I won't get any money for them otherwise. They work, but not very well. But running Chrome OS on one of these guys for I don't know, even something show related, you know, having a, you know, a screen where I could, I, I could, I could, I could use that in some way or even being able to donate that to some sort of, I don't uh, Like a school yeah, or a school. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, some, you know, like a, uh, like childcare program yeah, or, yeah. or anything mm -hmm. that, that, it, because I hate the idea that I'm like, well, the computer isn't dead. It's just not worth anything anymore. Not, mm -hmm. not to Apple. Right. Yeah. And, and so this is, you know, this, this is, I think this is a cool idea. I think people can get creative with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big proponent as I'm, I'm a person that likes to pass down technology within family uh, and friends. And I, I love the idea of using that. I worked in schools. I worked with uh, inner city families who, you know, and, and it's not like, Hey, I'm just going to give them my crap. And I don't, I hate when people do that. He's like, you know, get like Chrome, Chrome OS, I looked this up, Chrome, Chrome OS Flex. It's very nice. If you, want to live in Chrome? Are you comfortable living uh, in Chrome and giving Google your, uh, your data? And Tom, what did it mean by cloud first? That's the one thing I didn't, I wasn't clear on. Is it internet? Is this an internet only computer? Yeah, sort of. Uh, the, okay. the, the thing about Chrome is, is that it, 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 it's basically a big browser and it does some Android emulation. So it can do some local behavior. It has local storage capability. So you can store some of your documents online. That's but it, good to know. It's really meant to be used online. That, that, that's how gotcha. it was designed yeah okay awesome. well kv noted in our subreddit uh reddit.com slash uh daily, daily tech, tech news show, show. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of our show again yeah uh kv noted that pc mag reports the u.s federal trade commission or ftc will pursue action against companies that make false claims about data anonymization anonymization claims usually refer to stripping out personal identifying details from the data such as your name, your phone number, your address. However, if that anonymized information is sold to a third party, that third party can sometimes de-anonymize it by combining it with other data that it might be able to use and kind of triangulate and find out more about you. The FTC is especially concerned with this in regards to location data. The acting associate director for the commission's privacy division, Kristen Cohen, cited research published in the journal Patterns showing 95% of a data set of 1.5 million individuals could be identified using four locations with timestamps. So basically, it sounds like the FTC would prohibit location data from being used in anonymized data sets. Well, that's what they want to do anyway. Yeah. And they're making a lot of bombastic statements when they announce it, which is what politicians do. Uh, but. I, I, I kind of think this is reasonable. If you if you look past all of that, you're like, oh, so you're you're saying, like Sarah just said, uh, if you're calling something anonymized, that should, you know, having the name in there, you having the phone number wouldn't be okay. Location should be there too. So phone number, address, name, and location. Location uh should should not be allowed if it's anonymized. I think that's pretty reasonable. Now I wonder what else they might want to get out of there because there are other ways to de-anonymize data if you have other data to combine with it. So I'm not sure exactly where the line would be drawn, but I, I, I think it's pretty reasonable to say location makes it a lot easier to de-anonymize. So let's say you can't call it anonymized data if you're including location anymore. I, I, that, I don't know. Am I crazy? That seems fair to me. I thought it was very reasonable when I, when I read this, like, Oh, Okay, they're doing something good here. So it makes me wonder why why did they use such, as you term such bombastic uh language here? Why 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 make it so charged? 
by just saying, hey, know, we're this is actually points, a good thing. If you win points by saying companies try to flout the law, but we're going to stop them, like if you couch it in that phrase. But uh, I don't even think that's necessary here. I think you could just and, – and granted, I'd, I'd be horrible – uh, at being a, a government agency person because I wouldn't do the things you need to do to, to raise funds and all that. But, but essentially just say like, Hey, location is really easy to de-anonymize. So we're not, we're not allowing that. We're, we're drawing a line there and we might draw other lines in the future. We're going to keep evaluating it. I think it's important to, uh, the, um, what was cited by the privacy, um, the associate director for the privacy division of the FTC saying, listen, if, if Sarah goes four places, we can figure out a lot of other things about what Sarah's habits are, what she eats, you know, where she goes, uh, what she's, you know, what she's into in general. And that's important to remember is that, the, you know, this sort of thing, it, de-anonymizing data can tell a lot of people a lot of things about you, whether you want them to or not. Yeah. Um, and, and, and where you go is a huge part of that. Basically what this is saying is if we get a bunch of data and it shows us that this individual went to these four places at these four times, we can figure out that Sarah Lane. Mm-hmm. That's all we need. We don't even need any more data. So that's why you shouldn't be including location data in that, or at least 95% of the time in the study, they were able to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, folks, we'll be talking about that kind of stuff, I bet, next week with some of our special guests. It's going to be special guest week here on DTNS. So please, folks, uh, start telling folks about it. Uh, they're going to want to tune in. We have Jack Resider from Darknet Diaries coming on on Monday. Quinn Nelson from Snazzy Labs. Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd. Uh, don't miss it. Please, if you can, tweet, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Friendster, uh, work, <laughs> whatever you you still use. Uh, let people know about special guest week, dailytechnewsshow.com, all next week. Let's talk EVs. So GM, EVgo, and truck stop operator Pilot Company announced they will install 2,000 DC fast chargers for EVs uh, at up to 500 Pilot and Flying J truck stops in the U.S. Now, this is in addition to the 3,250 chargers GM and EVgo are already installing. As infrastructure starts to take shape, the competitive landscape for EVs is expanding as well, which is good. Hyundai is one of the fastest growing uh, makers. Sarah, tell us more about Hyundai. What are they doing? Yeah, so Hyundai is pitching its next EV, the Ionic 6 sedan, as a personal mobile studio. So it's a car, but it's also a workstation. The car has four USB-C ports, one USB-A port, and will be Hyundai's first car to support over-the-air software updates. There's a notes application built into one of the two 12-inch screens, and the center console is wide enough to hold a laptop. Hyundai also showed off an accessory for the uh, car called the Ionic Smart Table that snaps on to the center console and provides more workspace and three additional USB-C ports. So the idea is you fold it out, while you're parked somewhere to get some work done. Maybe you're in between meetings. Perhaps you're charging up your battery for whatever you're not driving at the time, of course, but your car is an office. The ambient light, uh, the ambient lighting lets you switch between 64 different interior colors and six pre-selected themes. If you're the kind of person who cares about that sort of thing. Well, yeah, you might want to have a work mood or a relax mood, depending well, on what you're Well, if it's at night, car, you know, yeah. a certain light really yeah, appeals yeah. to certain folks. Totally. But uh, we should not forget, it is also a car. Uh, it's designed <laughs> with a 0.21 drag coefficient, which it claims can achieve 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers uh, in, in usage. So you get a little extra range out of it and they're selling a big battery option. Uh, if you go for the, the top of the two options, you get a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery, which by European standards might be a little lower in the EPA, but by European standards would be a 379 mile range. Uh, the 53 kilowatt hour battery uh, will give you a shorter range, but still a little more than you would normally get out of 53 kilowatt hours. Mm. At least that's what they're claiming. Uh, it offers all wheel drive, can go zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.1 seconds. And those, uh, those ambient lights that we were talking about brighten as you accelerate so that you get the idea that you're, you're speeding. <laughs> But speaking of something that's very bright, check out this future. And because reasons, there's an NFT collection (laughs) 
that you can drive the car virtually in Zeppido and Roblox, as well as in VR headsets. So what a bright future there. Now, production of the Hyundai Ioniq 6 begins in Q3 in Korea, Europe later this year, and in the U.S., in January. Yeah, they're going to have an unveiling right. in the in the US in November too. That's probably where we'll get a, a retail price uh, here because we didn't get any prices for any of the markets uh, in this mm-hmm. announcement. But I don't know. I, it's a cool looking car. I don't know if I'm going to make it my home office though. I mean, it really depends on the person. I work from home. I mean, I, I drive pretty much every day to, you know, to do something. And I'm, you know, when I first read this, I was like, eh. I don't know. CarPlay works pretty well. <laughs> I mean, as long as I have cell service. But it's true that no, I'm not packing my laptop in with me. If I did, and I was sort of holding it, you know, trying to keep it away from the steering wheel, it would be kind of cumbersome. Or I don't know. I would sit in the back seat with my dog or something. I I can see where, depending on what you do and how mobile you are, this could really really be a great solution. You know, for anybody who's like, "Ugh, God, I had to do work in my car today. It sucked, but I, you know, I figured it out." type thing. If it if it actually becomes more of a comfort solution, then people might think about cars a little bit differently. Yeah, I was thinking about this too. Uh I have some friends who are uh you know, there's there's still on-road salespeople who, you know, travel from city to city. Uh, whether they're you know selling devices in hospitals or whatever, so they're they're constantly on the road and they may have to you know go to the side of the road to to take care of something real quick or they're an entrepreneur or yeah, heck even somebody like me who's a video creator might have to make an emergency video you know, <laughs> that has to that sure. has to go yeah, up yeah. and so I have to edit it on the fly or make it ch- I have had to do this I've had to pull over and make an edit change for a brand new video because they were like this is wrong fix it quick and I'm out and I just. Thank God I have my laptop with me. So there are mm-hmm. good use cases for 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 people with this. And you know, as the EV owner myself, I I was looking at this car, and I'm not one of those who's like uh, only Tesla, Tesla for life. It can only like I love that Hyundai has has, has a car. I, I love there's so many again, I, and I'm hoping that that get that price down to that sweet spot, thirty five thousand, even twenty five. If they, if a car can ever get down to twenty five again for EV. Because once people drive them, I think they'll like them. I think it's just the price point. Uh, it's it's scary for a lot of people. And Honda is the company I see to mm-hmm. to to really get mainstream people in, involved in it. And then having the charging infrastructure, because that's what's important here, right? Mm-hmm. Having having the various chargers. That's not just Tesla. That's yeah, EVgo and uh, or even just the the brand you're familiar with. Uh, having a GM one or maybe even Honda at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, these different charging points at places that you normally go. Uh, they'll be at gas stations, but they could be at other convenience stores or maybe malls, places that you have to go anyway to have charging infrastructure there. I yeah. think it's a really good idea. You want to not have to think about it. You don't want to be right. like, oh, I can't park there. That's a supercharger. Uh, I need an EVgo, right? You want it to just be mm-hmm. so many chargers, so many places that you're like, well, I know I'm going to be able to charge up you know, when I'm at x place and yeah i i think you know the ionic 5 uh it's a bigger car it's more of a family car uh but it's really doing well as an ev for hyundai and i think i think the ionic 6 is an interesting move to say well let's go sedan let's let's go for the single driver let's go for somebody it could you could pack a few things in it but it's really meant for just the person who lives in their car like not not literally lives in their car but you know spends a lot of time <laughs> if you uh, lived in, in your car, car this would also be helpful though. i mean you yeah, probably can't perfect. afford it at that point but yeah, right you know. yeah Hmm. Although it's cheaper than a house, so who knows? You've got you yeah, know, you've got a whole. Yeah, give it a year. There. Yeah, give it a year. It'll be it's a, lot a of tiny people. home. Yeah. <laughs> the Hyundai Ionic <laughs> Six. It's a tiny home. <laughs> I mean, I that's the marketing right there. I feel like it's over promising. It's like okay, four USB ports does not suddenly make this a home office. Like it's nice. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, I, it does I, in I, these, these seem like features that we're just going to expect. Uh, in the future, and Hyundai is, is at the forefront of that. Yeah, or, or trying to be for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, there's an underground indie artist. You probably never oh, heard really? of her, but her name is Beyonce. <laughs> uh, and she has joined Ooh. TikTok. Her entire catalog is now available to TikTok users to use as backing sounds for their creative videos. You want to do a remix? You want to do a uh, you know, a, a clap back to somebody on TikTok. Beyonce <laughs> wants to be your friend. It's a smart move. Her new single called Break My Soul, uh, which is all over TikTok. If you hang out on TikTok, you 
probably heard it. Uh, also songs like Halo and Single Ladies, you know, the, 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 the hot hits, they're all available. So Beyonce already has more than 3.3 million followers on TikTok. At least that's what it was when I checked this morning, probably more than now. She's big on the internet though. She has 268 million followers on Instagram, 56 million on Facebook, almost 25 million YouTube subscribers and 5.5 million Twitter followers. Yeah. Uh, a respect to her. That's 15.5 million. Uh, you're not in a beehive, obviously. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no, you said you said five point five million. I was like, oh, fifteen point five. Yeah, me. I was yeah. like, res- respect the beehive, okay? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, no, that's just that's just brain freeze I'm, on my I, part. I, I, I would no, never, I'm, I would never want to upset the hive. The funny thing is, they will they will find you if you if they had heard heard that. They're like, uh, uh-uh. uh. Hey, at yeah, least, 15. at least we can all release the wiggle <laughs> on TikTok officially. Yeah, now. Uh, this is the, it's smart though, right? Because it's very smart. We, we mm. know that. I mean, a lot of TikTok, so many songs that I I now understand. Oh, that's a Harry Styles song. Like I heard it on TikTok, and I just didn't. I didn't know the song otherwise. Never heard it on the radio, or just wasn't listening to the right station, etc. TikTok is a great way to get uh, your 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 creative. Well, in this case, a song uh, out to a lot of folks, yeah. you know, who are enthusiastically sharing it with all of their friends. Since Lil yep. Nas X and Old Town Road, uh, particularly, I think everyone has started to look at TikTok as an essential platform for releasing a- any kind of music. Uh, but today it arrived when when Queen B arrives on the TikTok officially <laughs> yep. and and gives it her blessing. Uh, tick- TikTok is now there. There's FM radio. There's Spotify, and now there's TikTok. Like it is, it is, yeah. it is part of the the major platforms when you release a song. I mean, that that's definitely what that means to me because she was doing, she's doing this to to give juice to her new album. So, and then and, and smart, like you said, smart thing to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tom, will you be dancing to Break My Soul anytime soon on TikTok? Well, on TikTok, maybe not, yeah. but I already okay. have in private. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I have released the wiggle, Lamar. Do you have that's a ring camera? I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking for exactly. no reason. Is this yeah. an emergency for a that you find out? <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> Depends on how it looked. I'm not saying it was one of the eleven incidents. No, uh, just uh, let's check the mailbag. <laughs> Let's do it. So James C. Smith wrote in agreeing with you, Tom, uh, about Elon Musk flip flopping on that whole Twitter purchase that we talked about earlier in the week. James C. Smith says many factors contributing to this. It would be a mistake to pin it all on one thing. Major factor is he probably thinks the price should be much lower than his previous offer due to changing market conditions. It's more than just Elon's Tesla stock losing value whose market dropped significantly since the offer was made. It would be silly to think that Twitter is still worth what it was month ago, months ago when Apple, Amazon, the whole NASDAQ composite is down 25%. It's hard to fault Elon for trying to get a better deal with conditions like this. James says, my partners and I sold our company back in 2008. We had an offer, both sides agreed, hadn't closed yet. Then the mortgage crisis happened. We got a call from the buyer telling us, The whole market just dropped 30% and so did your value. So we have a new offer for you. Take it or leave it. The good news, James says, is I took the cash I got from the sale of the business, invested it in the market at a market low. And I was able to ride the market recovery up and make back that 30% in not much time. Yeah. Uh, interesting to get somebody who's like been in that same position. Uh, maybe James, you know, acted a little less, uh, exuberantly and publicly in his situation, but you know, a, a, a similar, a similar situation. So there, there, there's, there's rationality behind this. Uh, and appreciate you sharing the, the story with us, James. Indeed. And if you have, if you have anecdotes, anything we talk about on the show, you go, you know, I've got a great story. Please do send them our way. We, we, it really helps us, uh, make, make our future shows that much smarter. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send that email. Um, we would like to send you all the hearts, Lamar Wilson, for being with us today. Let Thank folks know so where much. they can keep up with what's the latest. Well, I do uh, all kind of cool unboxings and things. Uh, you can find me at Lamar.tv, of course. But I have a great exclusive worldwide interview. I have not done an interview in years. And I did it with the one and only Tom Merritt what? on his new show, A Word. And I can, it released today and I cannot wait for people to listen to it. 
Uh, and I'm talking about uh, being a creator, trans- transitioning to being a uh, influencer. And Tom is one of the best interviewers in the world. I love this show. Oh, thanks, and I man. hope it goes amazingly. So please, please listen. I had a blast talking to you. And, and what, I, what I thought was really cool is, is you opened up and talked about your journey from being a, a creator known for YouTube stuff and moving mm-hmm. to vertical video and TikTok and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and I think that's really valuable and fascinating uh, for folks to, to hear. So uh, hopefully, folks, you'll go check it out, awordpodcast.com, and, and you can hear uh, Lamar and I just have a little the conversation. The lockdown happened the 16th. Yeah. <laughs> and, I was like, that I, sounds vaguely familiar, those, those dates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the- there you go. A little sample for you. Okay. <laughs> Great sample. Uh, good stuff. Check it out. Awordpodcast.com. And thanks to our brand new boss, Dwayne. Dwayne just started backing us on Patreon. And we like to give a big shout out when we get new patrons. So thank you, Dwayne. Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. 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 Who's There's as a longer cool version as Dwayne, of- Sarah? Who? The answer who is-, is whoever backs us on Patreon and gets mentioned tomorrow. Right. Yes. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's cooler than Dwayne. Not, not right now, today. they're not. Yeah. No. But as cool as mm-hmm. still, Dwayne, you're 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 never gonna be um mm-hmm. uh no one will surpass Dwayne. No, no, no. As cool. There's a longer version of the show called Good Day Internet <laughs> available at patreon.com slash DTNS, which uh anybody who's uh listening live knows we roll into right after the show. But just a reminder, we are live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back doing it all again tomorrow with Rob Dunwood joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)